for those of you who live in New England, happy fall. So I wanted to really talk about something that I feel like really just does not get enough airtime. And again, I can't say that I'm super active in the healing world. I'm really not. I used to pay attention a lot more. And then once the you know what came around, I really, I really have just kind of narrowed my focus. And uh, now I really just focus on myself and follow my passion. And uh, again, I'm always willing to listen and be very, very open to new ideas and what people are doing and all of that. But I really just don't take in as much from the outside anymore. And again, there are definitely exceptions. There's there's things that I don't know a ton about. They're just, it's not my wheelhouse. Uh, and I am certainly willing to explore that. Whoever's doing it, whoever's talking about it, uh, you know, if other people are having really great success with something, you know, absolutely I want to learn about that. But one of the main things that I wanted to discuss <clears throat> well, not really discuss, but put out there. And again, it, it's some, it seems that it's something that a lot of people don't think about. There's this concept in the allopathic world that if you're not over something within a window of time that you have to go to the doctors, okay? In my mind... It should always be a matter of severity and not time. time. Time for me is really not an issue. Time, time in and of itself of how long your body takes to heal something is not even an issue for me. It's what is the body doing? How is the body? Is the body getting progressively worse? Are you stabilized? You're just not getting better. <clears throat> or are you progressing, but it of, I mean, progressing in a good way, not a bad way. Um, or are you progressing in a good way, just really, really slowly, okay? Those are the things that are important. <clears throat> and it's the same thing with any symptom, any type of distress or any type of disease or any type of illness that someone has. Are you getting worse? Are you just stable? Which means you're not getting worse, you're not getting better, your body is just cruising along because it doesn't have the energy to actually get you out, but it has enough energy to keep you from, from dipping below the water, okay? So you're not drowning, but you're, you're, just, you're just stable, okay? You're basically flatlined. <laughs> That's kind of the way I look at it, is you're basically flatlined, even though flatlined means dead. I don't I don't mean that here, but I just mean you're not really getting any movement. Okay, you're not, you're not going this way, you're not going this way, you're just going this way. Okay, this to me is the primary first goal. This is the first step that I seek. And when I'm trying to help someone, it's what I try to get them to, to see. Again, I don't tell people what to do, but I try to get them to see. The first thing you want to do is stabilize. Get somebody to just hold steady. And sometimes people, once you get them to hold steady, they may not get better for a long time because their body does not have the reserves. It doesn't have the energy, the nutrients, again, whatever, medicine. It just doesn't have what it needs to heal. But it's holding steady. Okay, so again, I'm not one to rush in with warlike treatments and drugs simply because somebody is not noticeably getting better. Okay, now this is my reason, <clears throat> and this may or may not make sense to people, but this is my reasoning. The problem with going in with these really radical, harsh, potentially toxic poisons 
and radical treatments is that you're never going to know where the body's at. You are never going to get feedback from the body. You are never going to know where's the body. What does the body have for energy? And energy, I mean generally speaking, okay? Generally speaking, does your body have enough to bring itself back into a higher functioning state of homeostasis? If you start throwing powerful weapons at it, you're never going to know. You're never going to know. You're never going to know where the body is at because you're shutting it down. You're suppressing it. You're, you're basically just trying to make it go away. That's what we would call a bullet fix, a big old Band-Aid. Okay, so I am just not a fan of those approaches. Now, I'm not saying if, if somebody is literally going downward fast and they're, they're just, their condition is progressing, meaning in a bad way, okay, and nothing they're doing is stabilizing them, then that person has to make a decision about what they want to do. That's obviously, you know, obviously you've got to do something. If you're heading in that downward path and things are only getting progressively worse, and you're heading towards death. I mean, obviously, there's a time and a place to stop that if all other things have, have not been successful. But if someone is stable, I am definitely going to give that a very, very, very long time to see if we can make some shifts to get them to, to, to pop out. And even if you see like this little bit of dipping action, which is very, very common. It is so common when the human body is trying to heal. Okay, you, you, you end up getting these, these bumps and valleys and, okay, but it's movement. It's movement. Okay, so again, as the body is trying to, to heal itself, it's showing you all the time if it has what it needs. So if you just block that and shut that down, you're never going to know. And then something else comes along and boom. And now what happens is your body cannot deal with anything without big pharma and without their stuff. And that's, that's a precarious place to be, okay, especially heading where we're heading. So personally, I would not want to be in that position. I want to be able to have a body that can overcome things without that system. Because with that system, you don't really overcome things on your own. It's not coming from your own body, your own body's energy, your own body's healing. It's coming from something external. And remedies, natural remedies and things like that, again, they really just don't work like drugs unless, of course, you're doing large dosing and you're using an allopathic model and you're just throwing stuff at it, like poo, 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 poo. And again, I always use the parasite cleanse as an example because it's just so darn common, is people are using very, very powerful and harsh herbs to just wipe stuff out. And that is an extremely allopathic approach. And like I said, what happens is, is when you do that, it's basically like a bomb exploding. And you have no idea where the body is truly, truly at. When you start relying on those forceful, forceful things, you, you really, you have no idea. And truth be told, you're actually weakening your body. You're weakening it. And that's why I always tell people, you know, herbs can be used as supportive and they can be used completely allopathically. And I'm not opposed to allopathic, you know, stuff if it's absolutely necessary because someone's life is in real danger. 
and nothing else has worked or it's not an option or it's not available or whatever. But there is absolutely a time and a place to intervene in life-threatening circumstances. I don't think anybody's denying that. Maybe some crazy people, but nobody's denying that. But when it comes to supporting the body, it is a different, it is a different perspective, okay? And I'm going to leave everybody with this. Anyone who works with herbs and homeopathy, you could throw essential oils in there too, but I'm going to leave it out because to me it doesn't, you know, it doesn't need to be added to the conversation right now. <clears throat> if I'm going to use, I'm going to use blood root, which is sanguinaria and yellow dock, which is Lumix crispus in homeopathy. If you use blood root in herbal form and use it in homeopathic form, they both work. Okay? Now, if you're taking a large dose of blood root, which is not recommended, it's, a, it's one of those herbs that can be toxic in large doses, so but even, but, even, but even a moderate dose, which is what a lot of people will do. But yet homeopathy works. What, what's going on here? What's going on here? Same thing with yellow dock, right? Like, if it works in a homeopathic dose, what is it that's being communicated to the body? Do you need all those chemicals? Or is it the information? Is it the information that is actually being transferred to us? I'm going to leave you guys with that thought, okay? The world of healing is, is very, uh, <laughs> very interesting. And a lot of it is not what we've been told, okay? Signing out.